In this video, I am going to show you how to use different types of massage balls, massage creams to trigger point some of those nasty spots within your body that are hard to get to yourself with a foam roller. So I am a huge fan of massage balls and trigger points because I travel a lot during my tournaments without a physio. Um, and you know, before or after training, it's great to be able to mobilize and release some places yourself. So what you're going to need today is a spine massage ball. So this is simply two tennis balls that are taped together. So super cheap to do yourself. Um, you can buy equivalent ones that are proper spine balls, but this does a job for me. A reasonably sized massage ball, quite firm. I like mine quite firm, but you can have a softer one as well. There's spiky balls. Um, you could use like a baseball as well. A golf ball. If you have a golf course near you, there should be a ton lying around. And encyclopedia has to be A specifically, the letter A. No, it doesn't. Just a big book. This is just for one specific adductor massage ball method that my coach showed me. It can be a cookbook, it can be anything heavy, a textbook, something you're studying. Um, and then also some massage cream, moisturizer, whatever you have handy. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few self massage things that I do for myself regularly. So firstly, we're going to start with the spine massage ball. So this is to release the thoracic. So this is a really tough spot to get to yourself through like the foam roller or, you know, your hands, all that kind of stuff. So I find this really great for getting into those bits that are very tight for me. Like my thoracic is super tight most of the time. So I love to just go up and down on this gently because it's quite, it's a lot more, you know, um, pressure on a specific point than foam roller. And then if there's a tight spot, I just like to do little pulses. So just down and back up to help mobilize the joint. So the pressure helps isolate the joint and then allows your pivoting point to go up and down and help mobilize it. And then you go up to the next vertebra and do the same thing. So this is something that I always keep in my racket bag and travel with all the time. All right, moving on to the massage ball. We're gonna start with the nasty lower back. So I find these corners right at the bottom get super tight and that a foam roller doesn't really get in there quite enough. So pretty much the massage ball is gonna go right into that corner where the top of your kind of um, pelvis finishes and your spine joins or intersect. And you're just gonna lean back, put the ball there and then lift your bum up to whatever pressure helps and then just wiggle around to find some spots there. So I find this kind of self massage and trigger pointing great for learning about your body, where your tight spots are and also understanding, you know, when something's tight, how it might be a signal that you need to stretch it more or you need to be careful when you're lunging because this is tight. You know, if you're predisposed to like hamstring tears, having awareness of when things feel tight, when you might be more vulnerable to injury, that kind of thing, it's super important. And this is a great way to learn about your body and its signals and all the signs it gives you that you might have been unaware of previously. So that's the lower back. Then this is probably what I use this most for, the glutes. I have pretty much whenever I train, the first thing to get tight is my glutes. So I love to roll on this. I find, I've been even with like having a proper massage from a massage therapist that the glutes are super hard to release. And I find this really good to just stay on a spot for ages. You know, you can just do this watching a movie and get into some really good spots. If you can hear some clicking and talking, my boyfriend is playing Dota on the computer behind you guys. So just kind of exploring the glute and finding any tight spots and just staying on them. You can lift your opposite leg to get a bit more weight through it. Pretty much the more weight going into it, the, the stronger the pressure on it. And if it's too painful, you can lift 
your body weight more into your arms and that kind of thing. So one of the greatest places for this bad boy is the back of the hip here and the front. So for that, you kind of have to get into some awkward positions. So it's kind of side lying on it for me. So pretty much my whole hip weight is going into it. And then if I want more weight, I'll lift up this top leg again. But I, there's not much space to move, so you're kind of just pulsing or staying in one position here. And then I like to rotate forward a bit and get the TFL, or tension fascia latte. This is one of the most painful spots for. Oh. Be careful, sometimes, you know, you slide kind of jerkily across it. It's not a big deal, but it's painful. Then I move forward a, a bit more to the front, so getting more the front of the hip flexor. Again, it's kind of awkward when you find a spot, you have to figure out how to position your feet, which angle to lean on, to just kind of stay on it. And then with the hip flexor, I find because it's so tight and ropey that I kind of have to just pause on it, otherwise I just flick either side of it very quickly. Okay, all right. Next, we're gonna do the adductor. So this is where the book comes into play. So I never knew how to massage this with the massage ball because the massage ball is too small. So pretty much like my knee touches the ground, something is always kind of stopping from getting the pressure through. So my coach explained to me one day, he was trying to figure out how to do it and put the ball. So we're doing the left one here. You put the ball there, the book on top, and then you push down. So you can't really roll because it'll roll off, but it's pretty much just pressure pointing it. So we're just trying to get more weight and the book just helps it kind of have a flat surface to push off so it's not sliding everywhere. So you're trying to get it kind of right on that adductor, kind of awkward up in the groin with the book and the ball, but you've got to do what you've got to do for recovery and just kind of pushing through this leg with whatever pressure you can withstand and then repositioning it, finding another spot. Oh my gosh, that's taut. Okay, you get the idea. So next I'm going to go into the inner part of the knee. So this is where I get like jumpers knee pain, which is pretty much just from quad tightness. And I get it like directly at that inner point of my knee. So I find releasing specifically through this muscle is really good. And I find it a bit hard to do on the foam roller. So I get the massage ball and I put it right on that spot and then I'll just roll it around there. And it's actually super painful. Like, I don't know. I never think about this part of my quad down there, the kind of inner side. You don't really stretch it that much. So the first time I did this with the ball, I was like, Jesus, who would have thought? Okay, so next we go into the calves. So I like this for the calves because it's more pressure pointed. It's hard to get as much weight through your calves um, with the foam roller. So pretty much I just kind of start in the middle and then I'll go to the inner part, find a few tight spots, stay on them. This is also something easy to do while you're, you know, on your phone watching something. It's pretty chill, doesn't require a whole heap of tension. And then find this like side muscle gets really tight as well. Cool. All right. Alternatively, this is great for the shoulder area. So I probably use this most when I'm driving. I'll just put it behind me and try and get in between the shoulder blades, leaning back. I use it a bit before training for my kind of thoracic shoulder area is really tight. We're just trying to push back into it and work it around the shoulder blade up towards kind of the upper traps up here as well. Cool. 
And then I also like to get it right kind of through here. There's muscle called the infraspinatus that goes across the shoulder blade. And I find that gets really tight. So finding kind of that spot and pushing it in is super painful. And then kind of right there, the top corner, also a very good spot to massage. And then finally, you can use this to do your pec. I didn't think this through, but imagining this was a corner of a wall, it's helpful to have a corner because you want to get the force into it. If it's a flat wall, there's kind of nowhere for you to push because there's a wall there. So imagining this is a flat wall, I'll put it here and then I'll push in and get the pec. And then I can, as I'm doing that, I can move this arm up and down. I can move the ball and kind of feel the different muscles and areas there. So that's something that's also overlooked. The attack pec can contribute a lot to shoulder pain because it pulls your shoulder forward. So then when you're swinging, everything's in a different position and it can lead to unpleasant things within the shoulder. Okay, next we're gonna bring in my golf ball. So I didn't use this until kind of more recently, but I love it because I have had a lot of feet issues. So this is what I use to help self massage through my feet. So pretty much I like to sit up on something to get a bit more weight through it. I'll sit on the foam roller or just a chair and I'll just massage through the bottom of my foot. I've had a lot of plantar fasciitis, um, which is the main fascia or tendon that runs through the middle of your foot, which is kind of, you know, it's a result of a high training load, um, a lot of jumping, agility work, which we obviously do a lot in badminton. So I just use this to go through my foot. Um, I make sure to do this part below the big toe because that can get quite tight. And then also that part out towards the pinky toe. So I like to do this pretty much before every training session. All right, then I like to mobilize my feet after that. So when you think about the toes being like this, pretty much they can get stiff and tight and be very stuck together. So what I do to mobilize them is I try to move them um, parallel to each other like that to try and get them flowing so that they're more independent. So to do that, I try and anchor one part, so the four parts of my foot, four toes of my foot, and then I just try and move the big toe. So it's trying to separate those kind of two toes together. So I'm going like this, trying to get it mobilized. And then I'll do that through the next part. Sometimes my foot clicks. And you have to be pretty strong with this. Sometimes you can also just twist it as well to kind of twist them away. But if you have like, pretty much I learned this from having a lot of physio sessions and feeling what they do. But I find this really good for making sure my feet are ready before I train because obviously if they're tight, then the whole session they're just gonna be tight and you're gonna have poor biomechanics throughout it. So I like to do that before most sessions and then at night if they're feeling stiff and tight as well. Okay, that is all the balls done. Now I'm just gonna show you a little bit of some self massage that I do. So I am a huge advocate for massage. I love to get it like once or twice a week if possible, pretty much as much as possible. Um, but I also do it myself regularly if I don't have access to a massage therapist. So what I mainly use it for is my feet. So I like to massage my feet most nights, put it in the middle here, and I work through pretty much all the parts I just discussed now. So underneath this big toe, through the middle, don't forget this outside bit and below the pinky toe, and also really important up close towards the heel. I find when my heel gets tight that Massaging these sides of it, so the sides that run through here, helps a lot as well because the plantar fascia runs under here and then up the inner part of your calf. So the kind of shin splints and plantar fasciitis, they're all connected. Pretty much everything in the body is connected, you realize, once you're, once you're an athlete. 
So I kind of just work through there. I like to use my thumbs when I can't get as much pressure kind of going through a flat thumb. I like to bend it. And I, of course, having talked about shin splints and had them, I like to go down the inner part of my shin. So trying to get kind of under that bony bit, if you get shin splints in the inner part of your shins, this is great for that. Otherwise, if you get them through the front, releasing through this tibialis anterior is also really important. So you kind of need strong hands, which is good grip training for badminton. And I have flat fingers, and then I just kind of try and lean back and pull it into my body to get the pressure. Otherwise, I also use my thumb, pushing through here and going down. Sometimes just working on a spot, like one spot is easier than going the whole length because it's hard to maintain the pressure throughout it. So I'll do the inner part of my calf there. I'll do the Achilles, super important. And then if you have the mobility for it, the other side of your calf. So I bring my foot across and then I'm getting the lateral belly of the calf as well. And then the perineal. So this muscle that goes pretty much directly from this bone up here. Once you find it, you'll know you found it because it's usually pretty tight because we're always pushing laterally. So really easy for this one to get tight as a badminton player. And that's mostly what I massage. Alternatively, I will also massage my forearm if it gets tight. So pretty much I focus on this big belly section here. Super easy for that to get tight. I'll just do this. So I'll just work downwards, working through the big belly there. This part's a bit harder, but pretty much working down this middle section of your flexor and trying to get this bit. It's definitely awkward, but I find this one the most important. And then sometimes you might get tight through this muscle. So just putting some cream there. I like to, again, use that part of my thumb to massage through there when my hand is tight. This happens, you know, when you're doing a lot of heavy racket work or just a lot of repetition with explosive exercises like a lot of kills or that kind of thing. And it's quite easy when you up the loading in your racket skills to get wrist injuries. So I've had it, I've had kind of weird wrist strains where I can't play certain shots. Yeah, weird things. So it's really important to kind of stay on top of keeping your wrists healthy. Alrighty, I'm all oiled up with massage cream, made the mat dirty, I'm uneven, but that is it. That is pretty much some of the massage tools that I use to keep my body healthy, to get all those little spots that are hard to get um, alternatively. So I hope it helped you and that it can aid in your recovery so that you can train harder, longer, go faster and keep your body healthier for longer.